Right, it's that worst possible time of year now, when the weather's at its filthiest, we've got all this, and we need to make a little change to things on the setup of the bike to make things last a bit longer. I'll show you what we do. Welcome back. Welcome back indeed. Now what this is about is a little tip for you, something you might want to use. Um, as you know I run a Scott owner on the bike. This is the little canister that lives up under there, delivers oil through a tube onto the chain. And as you can see, if you just come on in pen, looking at the chain, that's how it constantly keeps it. If you set it up, so it comes, I, I, I set it up to run roughly 30 seconds per drip, or one drip every 30 seconds, and that's how it leaves the chain. With a little bit of fling off going onto the wheel. I could have it more than that. If we're going on a longer run, I turn it down a bit because obviously the long sustained riding, that does tend to make even more delivery. But as it is, that's looking after the chain nicely. Now, I want to just show you on here. Let's pick a link. Here we are. If we just clean one of that, clean off the lube on that. There's a, there we are. That's how it's made it. That's how it's looked after it. In, I would say, that's about six and a half thousand miles since I fitted this chain of sprockets. Six and a half thousand miles so far, and I haven't adjusted it, and I haven't had to lube or clean it or wash it at all. Remember, I did a chain cleaning video some time ago. If you use the spray on chain wax, they always recommend chain wax for the winter, purely because it, it that wax protects the chain. But in my personal opinion, it's a bad thing because it also acts as a flypaper, sticks all this to your bike, and that in itself grinds the chain away, and it does wear it quicker because it's the interface between the inside of that sprocket and these rollers here that get the grit in them and that does the damage. What you actually need in the winter when there's lots of grit about, or even in a sandy environment, if you're in the desert area or something like that, you need a chain lubricant that's washing through the chain, effectively irrigating the chain and keeping it clean. Now on that front, when you go with the Scott Oiler, they're a kind of 50-50 thing. I want to show you, this is the stuff that I use in the Scott Oiler. It's just a standard oil, but you can see from the properties of it, that it has this kind of sticky, tacky appeal to it. That's what the Scott Oil's like, and that's how it stays, for the most part, on the chain, and that's how it lubricates. But personally, that, even that, is too much for the winter at the moment. This last two months of winter is when there's an awful lot of salt on the roads, a lot of this grit around, and that chain is normally cleaner than that. This silver effect we've got here, that's what it's normally like, and wet all of the time. It never gets dirty because the dirt that sticks to it is just washed away. But there's so much of it around now, I need to make a change. So hence the title of this, what I've done in the past, is switch over to two-stroke oil. And I'll show you the difference. You saw what that was like just now. But when you go to two-stroke oil, you see the difference. And if I do the two, you can actually see the difference between the two. That's ordinary oil. You can see the difference. There's no stickiness to the two-stroke oil. But it's oil. That's the point. It is oil, and if you put that in your Scott oiler, just for the purposes of the worst possible weather, that stuff is going to be ideal. Just cheap, nasty two-stroke oil. You can use Dextron, automatic transfluid, transmission fluid, anything like that. Anything that's a regular oil. I wouldn't use engine oil. The reason I would say don't use engine oil is it has additives in it for the engine and so on. Whereas two-stroke oil, if you think about it, is designed to go in a canister or in a container on the bike, be fed through tubes into the bike's system which is pretty much what a Scott Oiler is. So your auto lube system, obviously this oil is compatible with it. And when you look at it, what is a Scott Oiler? It's an auto lube system. So effectively this is probably the most compatible best oil to switch over to. Just a regular non-sticky oil for the winter. So I'm gonna do that now, it's gonna fill it up and then make sure it's all primed and delivered and that will be us set up for the last two months of the winter. So let's get stuck in. Right, for those of you eagle-eyed, really eagle-eyed, have noticed that Scott Oil is actually blue and this stuff is yellow. Well, I'll tell you why, because at the moment I'm using Morris's 30 weight chainsaw oil. Basically, because of the cost. This time of year I'm going through probably, I reckon, one of these every two weeks and that gets expensive. So just for the winter, I just switch over to the chainsaw oil. Uh, and again, it's exactly the same thing. It's, it's When you look at the formulation of these proper Scott Oil, which is recommended for the system, then it's actually better to use that or use it yourself. But for my purposes on here, because I'm going through so much of the stuff, I just use chainsaw oil. But for now, for the next couple of months, 
I use the little delivery bottle. And I'll just top it up with two stroke oil and use that instead. Now I keep my canister there just behind the side panel, nice and easy access. And there it is. So, which I'm going to do, Pen, I'll get you a torch. Thank you. And you can be my torch monitor, check out the level. Now, right, can you get in up under there? And you'll see the level come up. You might want to just get down, baby. Filling up? Mm-hmm. Where do you want it? Just filling up, just up to, sort of, up to here. Okay. Right, there we go. That's it, full up. The air tube back on. Now, obviously this isn't about... Um, Scott Oilers as such, I did a video on the Scott Oiler and this is only for those of you who already see the light and run one. And there it is. Simple as that. Two stroke oil in your Scott Oiler. It acts to irrigate the chain. It's super runny, it rolls through the chain like water and it rinses all the grit and the dust away and it keeps that chain safe because the one thing you want is the chain oily and clean, isn't it? It's pretty obvious really. And that works like a total loss system. Now you are going to go through that canister a lot quicker. So I would probably go through one of those a week. They, they matter. I mean that pot of two stroke oil, I got it in a supermarket. It was, oh, 99 pence, I think, £1.99, something like that. It doesn't cost it. When you look at the cost of the Scott oil, it's a great deal more and your chain will start to get grit attached to it. And that's what it's all about. The chain and sprockets on your bike should last 35 to 40,000 miles comfortably if you really look after it in this way. Or you can run them out in about 12,000 if you don't give a damn. It depends on how much money you've got to spend. At 130, 140 quid a set, it's a lot of money, isn't it? Okay, there we go. I hope that helps you. Give it, give it a try if you like. If you find that it's too much, turn it down. You can just adjust the delivery accordingly. But whichever way, there's a little tip for you. I hope it helps. Take easy ride safe. See you next time.